ladies. I hope everyone is well. I recently discovered some stats that were extremely alarming to me, and it's something that all women should know. And just another example of how women's health and safety are willingly being overlooked when men in positions of power have a monopoly on making decisions about the safety of women and children. A 2019 study from the University of Virginia reported that female drivers are 73% more likely to be seriously injured in a frontal car crash, 17% more likely to lose their life than a male occupant of the same age, and 47% more likely to be seriously injured in a car crash of any type. An article from Consumer Reports titled The Crash Test Bias, How Male-Focused Testing Puts Female Drivers at Risk, goes on to state, Researchers have known for decades that women are more likely to be killed or injured in a car crash. Why haven't safety regulators done anything about it? Although the majority of Americans killed or injured in car crashes are male, the raw data masks the fact that females are actually at greater risk of death or injury when a crash occurs. Data from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Federal Highway Administration shows that males drive more miles than females and are more likely to engage in risky behavior such as speeding, driving under the influence of alcohol, and not wearing a seatbelt. But a study from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration shows that a female driver or front passenger who is wearing her seatbelt is 17% more likely than a male to be killed when a crash takes place. Researchers have understood since at least the early 1980s that male and female bodies perform differently in crashes, but the vast majority of automotive safety policy and research is still designed to address the body of the so-called 50th percentile male. Currently represented in crash tests by a 171 pound, 5 foot 9 inch dummy that was first standardized in the 1970s. Today, the average American man is about 26 pounds heavier. No dummy takes into account the biological differences between male and female bodies. Because automotive design is directly influenced by the results of safety testing, any bias in the way cars are crash tested translates into the way cars are manufactured. So if safety tests don't prioritize female occupants, car makers won't necessarily make changes to better protect them. The dummy industry and automakers won't make that leap themselves. Why? Because it's expensive. It would take doing crash tests multiple times with different dummies to account for the difference in anatomy between male and female. And car companies aren't going to do that on their own because they already have women's money. Women are still going to buy these cars based on safety ratings for men, even though the safety ratings and stats don't actually apply to women. Not only are women 73% more likely than men to be seriously injured in a frontal car crash, they're also almost twice as likely to become trapped in the wreckage of a car. Caroline Criado Perez, author of Invisible Women, pointed out in 2019, women tend to sit closer to the pedals than men, generally being shorter while still needing to reach the pedals in order to operate the car. This is deemed to be out of position driving rather than the manufacturer recommended position. Sitting in this position, though required in order to drive, puts the driver at a greater risk of injury. Let's watch a video of Ms. Perez going more into detail about the issue. Hi, my name is Caroline Criado Perez and I'm a writer and author of Invisible Women, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. The gender data gap is the name for the fact that the vast majority of information that we have collected historically and continue to collect has been based on men. Typical male lifestyle patterns and male bodies, everything from economic data to urban planning data to transport data to medical data has mainly been collected on men. And what that means is that pretty much everything in the world from the office you work in to the transport you use to get there to the medical treatment you receive to the phone in your hand to the apps on that phone have been designed to work for men. And the result of that is that most things in the world just don't work that well for women. When we think of car crashes, many of us may be thinking of young men, which is understandable. Men are more likely to be involved in a car crash than women, which means they dominate the stats of those who are injured in car crashes. But when a woman is involved in a car crash, she is 47% more likely to be seriously injured than a man in the same car crash, and 71% more likely to be moderately injured. She is also 17% more likely to die. There's a very simple reason for this. For decades, the only car crash test dummy that was used was based on a 50th percentile male, and it is still the main dummy that is used in car crash safety test. And the result of this is that the car is designed all wrong for women. Women tend to sit further forward than men when they're driving. 
This is because of needing to reach things like the pedals and see over the steering wheel, quite an important part of driving. But what that means is that a woman is put out of what is called the standard seating position. Obviously, this is standard for the average male. And that means that she is at higher risk in a frontal collision. But it doesn't stop there. Seat belts have not been designed to accommodate breasts quite a normal part of a female physique. But the problem with that is that women are therefore wearing seat belts often what is called improperly. Uh, we don't know where to put them in relation to the boobs. But then you've also got the issue of the seat backs, which are too firm. Now this isn't an issue of comfort. This is that seats have been designed to accommodate the height and weight of a bigger body than the body of the average woman. And what that means is that if a woman is in a car crash, she gets thrown further forward than a man in the same car crash. So what have you got? You've got the woman's already sitting too far forward, she's wearing her seatbelt improperly, and then she gets thrown forward. And that is why, if a woman is in a car crash, she is 47% more likely to be seriously injured and 17% more likely to die than a man in the same car crash. Women are also at higher risk in rear end collisions. Women have less muscle on our necks and upper torso than men on average, which makes us more vulnerable to whiplash. Women are actually up to three times more likely to suffer whiplash than men in a car crash. And car design has amplified this vulnerability. That's partly those pesky seat backs again, but it's also to do with the type of headrest that is used. And some headrests which have been designed to fix whiplash made it better for men, but far worse for women. Although a pregnant car crash test dummy was actually created back in 1996, its use is still not mandated either in the US or the EU. In fact, even though car crashes are the number one cause of fetal death from trauma, we still haven't even developed a seatbelt that works for 62% of third trimester pregnant women. But don't despair, there is some good news. The EU belatedly realized that women exist in 2015, and they introduced what they call a female car crash test dummy. It's debatable how much this actually is a female car crash test dummy because it's really just a scaled down male dummy, a very, very scaled down to about the size of a 12 year old child car crash test dummy. But nevertheless, the scaled down dummy does now exist and it is used in one out of the five regulatory tests, but only in the passenger seat. Clearly what is needed is a wholesale redesign of cars using female data as well as male data. We live in a world where all of us men and women, are biased towards thinking of men when we think we're speaking gender neutrally. The truth is, most of us don't even notice when we've forgotten to include women. The failure to include female bodies in design affects women's lives. It makes them poorer, it makes them sicker, and when it comes to car design, it's killing them. I'm going to link Ms. Criado Perez's book in the description. I bought it recently and I cannot wait to start reading it. I want to show you a chart that shows whether the driver was male or female in all accidents in the United States where there was a fatality from 1996 to 2021. You can see that the dark blue section is male drivers and the light blue section is female drivers. I looked at some other stats that showed every single year dating back to the 1980s and there has never been a year where men didn't drastically outnumber women in causing car crash fatalities. They also drastically outnumber women in causing car car crash fatalities in which the driver is under the influence. In 2021, 72.3% of all car crashes involving a fatality had a male in the driver's seat, even though according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, males only account for 62% of the driving. So men are far more dangerous to everyone else on the road, yet they're the most protected in the case of an accident. I would, however, like to leave you with a little bit of good news and highlight a woman who is taking the necessary steps to make driving safer for women. Her name is Dr. Astrid Linder. She's a Swedish engineer and she created the first 50th percentile female dummy, which hopefully will start to be implemented in crash tests in the future. It's going to take some time, but the more women start acting instead of being passive, the faster we'll be on our way to reducing the unnecessary danger that the auto industry is putting women in. I'm going to link two petitions in the description, which I'm urging all of us to sign. We really need to make our voices heard if we expect any change to happen for us in the future. The first petition is from Consumer Reports. There is about 1,500 signatures shy of the 25,000 goal. The second one is a change.org petition 
started by a woman named Maria Weston Kuhn, who survived a car accident in 2019 where her and her mother were severely injured. Please sign both of these petitions and let's get this ball rolling. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Stay safe and buckle up. Thank you.